Okay, uh, welcome everyone to a very quick and special episode of Two Super Gamers. Yep. Uh, it's your boys, uh, 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 Nanners and Zero, and we're going to be talking about Paris Games Week. It just happened the, uh, yesterday. That's right. Uh, we got a bunch of notes that we took. Uh, we both got to watch it. We didn't get to watch it in person, so we could make like a special video, but uh, we still wanted to make sure that everybody kind of got to hear our take on the on the big playstation conference so yeah so uh let's get into it so right before they started with the whole uh what's it called the actual main show so a couple of noteworthy ones because i didn't really see coming first one they said was guacamelee 2 yeah that was really nice because um with guacamelee you know uh, that that was one of the games that I swear I thought it would it wasn't gonna happen. I didn't think it was gonna be a thing, and uh, sure enough, there it is. They announced it. It looks it looks like they revamped it. They they came up with a bunch of cool new concepts for the game to refresh the gameplay. So you're not just playing a straight sequel. You're you're playing something that they actually built upon and improved upon. And yeah. And that was one of the games yeah. uh, announced yesterday that I was I honestly thought we were never going to see a sequel of. So that's that was quite a surprise. And of course, it started the show off too. So there was that. Oh, indeed. Uh, the first one was always the fun. The first one was fun. Have it on my Vita. Play it on the go. So I'm quite excited for the for Guacamelee too. I, I'm definitely a fan because I have every version of that game. I have a giant poster of it in my room. And I have a, a lucha lucha style wrestling mask that I got signed by some of the developers. So, you know, mm-hmm. this this one that's is for right. me. This one is for me. <laughs> well, that's definitely for you. Yeah. Um, Spelunky two. That's yeah. Did not see this coming. Yeah, that was whatsoever. The next one that I was like, again, I I was not entirely sure that we would ever see a Spelunky again. Um, I, I attended this event with one of the developers. It was more of like a panel presentation uh, where one of the developers was speaking. I think it was Andy Hall, but I mean, I could be wrong. Anyway, and, um, and I, I, I almost recall him saying that they really didn't have any plans to do a Spelunky 2. Like, it, it wasn't anything they even really wanted to do. So it, this this one to me was even more of a surprise. And again, this was a game that I thought would, we would just would, wouldn't see a sequel on. So, um, you know, again, it's it was awesome. It was a major surprise, and uh, I'm definitely excited. Oh, that, same here. Um, it this whole idea of like uh, the first character from uh, the first main character, Spelunky One. The kid is gonna take up the mantle of going in there and doing stuff. Yeah. It's. I think it's a nice little uh, a continuation. So, hopefully, they come up with some cool, new, fresh stuff for Spelunky too. Definitely. Uh, um, and then, this, and by the way, this uh, was all from the pre-show. Uh, they yeah, actually... this is the pre-show. Still have one more noteworthy game to talk about: a uh, Loco Roco Two. <laughs> okay. Two. Uh, played played a little bit of the first Loco Roco. Didn't really play too much of it, but hey, uh, a sequel's always uh, should be fun. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, we got to see what well, Parapon got remastered, uh, Parappa. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see them bringing that stuff back and giving them remastered treatments. I just hope at some point that means we could see a new Loco Roco. Uh, maybe something new from the team that created this game, too, and uh, but it's always good to see a, a familiar franchise kind of get, get this uh, fan servicey type of treatment. No, indeed. Um, I'd love to see a new medieval game, but we'll see. We'll see what they do. Yeah, <clears throat> there were there were a ton of games that, like, like honestly, they led with a real uh, like a good batch of games. It it wasn't just the pre-show was just a waste of time. It actually had. I actually had several really cool announcements. Um, I'll just go through the list because I'm sitting in front of a page full of what they did uh, for the pre-show. Uh, Hong yeah, Kong go Massacre for it. looked good. The Gardens Between looked really good. Uh, there was some Sims 4 stuff. Uh, uh, then they started to go into VR and like heavy with the VR. 
So they had Megalith, Bow to Blood, Ultra Wings VR, uh, Sprint Vector. Looked pretty Sprint cool. Sprint Vector, by the way, I am excited for. I definitely yeah. want to play that. You're, you guys will definitely see it on the channel sometime soon. We, we were talking about it. I, I like that it kind of looks like Sonic meets Jet Set Radio. Uh, yeah, definitely. In VR, no less. Um, they gave us a release date for Moss, which was February 2018. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait. I really can't wait. And we also did get some a little bit of... Um, I wasn't too clear on the gameplay for that game because uh, obviously it's in VR so you thought well is it going to be like first person from the mice no you you kind of control it from like the side of the mice and you watch, you have them go through uh, platforms or like have them do like platforming um, puzzles and whatnot. so and I, I'm thrilled like honestly Moss looks like the best thing on VR to me right now it's interesting it's unique it's kind of cute and quirky and uh you know, it's also something that doesn't have to look that good. So if the graphics aren't the the best, you're not really gonna. I'm not gonna complain too much because the gameplay is gonna sell the game as opposed to. Uh, well, how this how how does this game look? Um, we got a trailer for Star Child. Uh, Chris Redfield will be in Resident Evil Seven, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, because uh, I thought I thought this was like a, pl- a completely new game that we're going to bring back anybody old, but hey, it's DLC. It I just don't like Wesker, everyone. Uh, people like it, but whatever. Uh, we got Pixel Junk VR, Dead Hungry, uh, which also releases the day after the show, which is Halloween, which is for us to, at the time of this recording today. That um, game actually does look like fun. Uh, just making stuff, throwing it at zombies, having them eat it before they come and eat you. Sounds I, exciting. I, I hope it's. I hope. I hope it's pretty good. I hope it's cheap. I, I would be interested in buying it and checking it out for myself. Uh, then they had Stifled, which is like an interesting horror VR game. League of War looked really good. Um, there's. I wrote Final Fantasy bullshit because they're going on about Final Fantasy 15 in VR. Uh, yeah, but all they had, yeah. most of what they had was like this whole fishing bullshit, and I don't understand no. the idea. Um, they had Invector VR, which looks really interesting because it's kind of like, it seems like it's going to be amplitude, frequency, uh, and maybe they would even go the audio surf route and give you a custom soundtrack. They didn't say much about that yet, about what the soundtrack's going to be like, but either way, um, I mean, you're, you're playing amplitude and and whatnot in first person Uh, it's that's fantastic and then the other the uh last announcement was um o-ray and uh that actually came out yesterday so that came out the day of the uh, announcement of the of the event so that was the pre-show and now we're gonna yeah that that was all the pre-show mind you guys so What's coming next is the actual main show, and they had some pretty cool stuff to announce then, too. That's right. Uh, they had... So they had... The, they start off with a bang. Uh, I guess you could say with a, a punch, a sucker punch. Uh, yeah, indeed. Yeah, so we start, we start seeing this yeah, game... Yeah, Sucker Punch's new game is uh, pretty interesting. Didn't yeah, we, expect it from them. We start seeing this new game that's kind of... Uh, it, it's it's uh, it's based on samurai, and it looks like it's gonna be a hack and slash or like an adventure, maybe kind of like a Souls ish, like a Dark Souls esque game. Um, it's the, these are these are all things that don't really sell me by themselves. Uh, the game does look beautiful, and it does look like it's focusing on story, which I like. But then what hooked me was the fact that at the very end, the Sucker Punch logo came out. I jumped out of my seat. I was like, finally, I've been waiting for these guys to do something for such a long time. Or to just get something new from them, some new infamous, whatever, anything. I just wanted a new Sucker Punch game. And a new IP from them is more than I could have asked for. And uh, it's supposedly going to be an action stealth adventure game. And uh, they've been in in development on it for about three and a half years already. So, Yeah, the game is called Ghost of Tsushima. Yep. And... I'm uh, sold. I'm so, already um, sold because it's just because uh, just because it's a new Sucker Punch game. <laughs> the same here. I I would have never expected Sucker Punch to come out with a game like this, and 
it just looks really well thought out, well made. Um, I can't wait. It's a, it's a new IP from a very, very reliable. Yes. Same people who made Sly Cooper. Can't wait to see this. Uh, then we moved on to... Um, they start to talk about PlayLink for a little while and how it's family-oriented and that's how it's changing the way we play games. Uh, but after that, they showed off Concrete Genie, which I liked. Yeah, con- it looked really interesting. Concrete Genie. Me as an artist, Powell like liking his creative stuff. This game looks beautiful. The idea is simple. You just take a big old brush, paint a whole bunch of stuff onto the wall. You can customize it any way you like. And they come to life, and they help you out in certain ways. Uh, it re- reminded me of three games. Right off the bat, the character looked like Delson from Second Son. And then I couldn't uh-huh. help but notice that, well, he's painting on walls and, and whatnot. And that just is so cool. Um, it also reminded me of two... Gameplay-wise, it reminded... Or, you know, we didn't really see gameplay, but what I assume is th- what the game is going to be like. I was reminded of two games, Papa and Yo and Rain. Uh, if you remember, it was this P- both were these PS3 Ooh. indie games a while back. Um, I just that's the vibe I got off of this game. But anyway, it it looks really cool. I, I like I like the idea of being able to interact with your environment so much to to solve puzzles and to get through the story and whatnot. So, yeah, same here. Uh, it's definitely once again a game you're most likely going to see on our channel. Look out for that. Then we had Erica. Uh, which was is not the name of a game. person. Uh, it's the name of a fictional character. And kind of... I feel like me and Hans have to put this on our on our show at some point because of uh, like the, the focus on changing the story. It just feels like it's a heavy rain type of game and like we need to, oh, we need to put that onto the thing. Then after that we had Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown for the VR, uh, which is cool that that game is going to be in the VR. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to fly around in a super fast aircraft? Mm-hmm. So we, we got another like little VR segment here. Uh, they did Rec Room VR, Apex Con- Construct, uh, Smash It Plunder, Transference, Eden Tomorrow, and uh, what I think was the most promising one out of all of them, uh, Blood and Truth, which pits you as kind mm. of like a James Bond type spy or something, and it's like a stealth game in VR. Um, yeah, that's right. I remember looks that. Pretty good. Looks pretty good. I feel like they should find some way to combine that game, and I expect you to die. <laughs> like they're both just. Oh my god! They're essentially the same idea, you know. I have expected to die, and I still need to try. I still need to play it. Oh. It's, it just, it's just so much fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't have it at all, but it just it looks like such a fun experience. <clears throat> So <clears throat> then we got into Sony promised like these six games are gonna be you know groundbreaking and uh, we're gonna focus on them. And of those, it was Far Cry Five, which they gave a release date for. Uh, and the trailer looked a lot like they were just showing off a whole bunch of multiplayer, to be honest. Yeah. But the multiplayer did look like a lot of fun, so. Well, I don't know. I mean, I just... Ew. My issue was that I honestly could not peg what the game was. So from the beginning, I was guessing, what is this, State of Decay or some something else? That I don't know. I thought... It, I was starting to think it was um, uh, that game that everybody panned on a lot for Sony. Oh, fuck. That they shot off at the last couple of E3s and it was like a big deal. Uh, fuck, I forgot what it was called. Anyway, the generic. Not remembering it, to be honest. It's like zombie game that really didn't seem that interesting, but they were. Oh, really I know which one you're talking about. It's by. Uh... Anyway, I. If it. If I it... know which one you mean, but it... it's not that interesting. Yeah, I was just saying, like, I, I thought it was that. I thought it was that because I wasn't sure. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what. You know what we were looking at, and then it turns out, oh, new Far Cry game. I'm like, well, well that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, then we had some more Destiny stuff. I didn't yeah. really pay attention. Uh, because, an, ex- uh, an expansion pack called uh, Curse of Osiris. Yeah. And um, especially after that whole list fiasco, Destiny being a whole RPG. Like, sure, it's a fun game. Not necessarily our taste, though. Uh, that's right. 
And uh, then after that, by the way, that game was Days Gone. That's what I, I just. I, I Days that. Gone. Okay, there we go. Uh, then we had Monster Hunter, and I was also surprised on this one because I thought, well, the game's coming out soon, and we already know so much about it. I feel like, like I, I feel like, uh, why are why are we watching well, this? Said, right? Yeah, but then the twist was what they revealed at the end, which was that you can play in the game as Alloy from uh, um, Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn. And uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Because I feel like she fits yeah, perfectly for that, for that game. It, it was a nice little surprise, and it gets me more excited for the game myself. Yeah. Uh, then we had some Call of Duty stuff. Did not pay Kaduki. attention to that. Uh, Kakaduki that. World War II. Basically, some new DLC stuff. Uh, order it, and you get it first on PS4. Big deal. It's Kakadooki. What do you want? And uh, hate us in the comments, by the way. And uh, on yeah, rush. Go ahead and hate us. We don't care. By Code Masters, uh, which was kind on of a racing game. Looks like fun. Yeah, it looks pretty. I'm good. a big fan of racing games. As we all well know. Yes. Um, it looks colorful. It looks fast. It looks fun. Remember, these are Can't the guys that it. made Dirt. Dirt was really. There was fun and like arcadey, but still kind of realistic, but just very colorful, customizable fun. So I have high expectations on this one. Uh, then we had some Star Wars Battlefront 2 stuff. Not gonna lie, kind of didn't pay attention either. Um, I just kind of personally didn't... I have no interest in that game. Uh, I might buy it at some point, but currently not really. So I'm sure they showed off something interesting, probably some DLC, probably some PS4 exclusive stuff too. Uh, and then I think the biggest, I guess the biggest game on the PS4, depending on who you ask really, uh, they showed off more Spider-Man stuff. So. Spider-Man is looking so freaking good. However, in the last um, the Sworn, it was the new Spider-Man Um the, the African American kid. It yeah. looks like it's actually Peter Peter Parker still. Yeah, yeah, it, that threw off a lot of people. I saw a lot of uh, theories on that all over the internet. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting. I like that they kind of threw that curveball. To me, I really don't care because I'm not so invested in the lore. I just want to be playing a Spider-Man game, uh, especially if it's developed by Insomniac. A, but a good you know. Spider-Man game. Yeah. Yeah, which this is this is uh, looking to be a good one. Uh-huh. Uh, then they showed off a game that I am so sick of hearing about. Uh, I'm so glad that, you know, hopefully if they stick to the release date, we won't have to see it at next year's E3, finally. But that's, uh-huh. of course, Detroit Become Human, the latest, latest yep. and greatest David Cage concoction. Um, we'll definitely be playing it on this... You know what? I may even be able to be to convince Hans to fucking full play through this all over again. Son <laughs> I don't know of about a bitch. that, but we'll definitely get it onto the show because I I am getting this. I'm just kind of tired of seeing him talk mm-hmm. about the game and and see like uh, more teasers. To me, I have a rule with video games. If it's if it's three or more E threes, I don't want to see it anymore. I just I don't even care if we don't see it for like another two years. I just wanted to. I just want to think about new games at that point, and I think this is. I think uh, Detroit has already passed that at this point, so like I just I don't care. I just want to play it already. Um, you can't. You really can't sell me on this game more or less than you than than you already have. So, you know. Yeah, um, seriously. Just um, get it onto shelves. The trailer already. did look pretty. And let's go. The the game the, the game did look promising. It's just. Basically, family situations, abusive father, little kid. What do you do in that situation? It was interesting how they almost like the trailer spoiled looked some stuff from that game because, like, they showed off a bunch of these plot points, and it's like, well, I mean, but that's story of the game. Like, aren't you? Like, it's that's the weird scenario you have when you have to show off how you can do ten million different things in the game. Anyway, less about that. Then yeah. we went to another heavy hitter, which is God of War. Um, which we got to see a tiny bit of gameplay of, which was nice. Um, you know, Kratos is looking badass with that beard. Yes, he is. That is true. Um, his son isn't as useless as in the last trailer where he accident we accidentally shot Kratos. 
Yeah, he actually kind of helped out here. Yeah. Next game is Horizon, just basically the same DLC from before, Frozen Winters. Mm-hmm. Frozen, the Frozen Wilds. The Frozen, the Frozen Wilds. Wilds. Yep. Correction. Uh, Good. No, more to say from that. Then we had some sick gameplay footage from uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, it the looks remake. Good. It looks, yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta specify it's the remake, but yes, it looks fucking for, amazing. For any of you who've played it before, this trailer showed off the flying dragon serpent thing. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh god. And we got to see him stab it and everything. It was nice. It was, nice. it was again, it was a really short Paris Games Week. I don't think they they go for length, but they filled up so many games that like. Really, the longest thing is the final thing, which we're about to get into. Um, but it's like you know, we have uh, we have we have like a snippet of gameplay from like each of these games, or a snippet of information or trailers or teasers about these games. So we didn't get to see too much of Shadow of the Colossus, but it was nice to see it running, and like mm-hmm. the like fur on the back of the uh, the the Colossus was shaking, like realistically looking. Like it just it looked like a it really looked like a PC game, you know, maybe five years ago. Like that, a re- that, that a really definitely was a high end PC game. Yeah, that wasn't capable five years ago on a console. At least I I don't remember anything like that. Uh, at least not that smoothly anyway. Uh, and mm-hmm. then finally we have our last game, the last game of the thing, which was so funny because I like we were both talking about it. And we we're like, what is it? What is it? I thought it was Death Stranding. Uh, then I kind of guessed Last of Us, and I was right, and it turns out to be Last of Us. Uh, it was hard to tell because uh, Ellie was in the was in this trailer again, but she didn't look like herself because painting, and then the fact that her hair was wet. The trailer um, was also seeing, very we're seeing... dark, so we were not able to really see oh, much of anything. Really, it was it was kind of hard to see. Uh-huh. All you saw was the characters and like fire in the back. And it was just so much darkness that, yeah, it was hard to tell. It was hard to tell who it was, you know. But, yeah, we were seeing Ellie get strung up by her neck. She's about to get killed. Yeah. The Asian chick comes running in, gets I... tackled down, clipping her wings, which uh, was another dead giveaway. Yeah. I... Yeah, that's what I said because I thought, oh, it's like she's probably a firefly, you know, clipping her wings. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to say, this trailer... This trailer went really far. I had, I cringed, man. It was really hard to watch. I, I feel like the trailer has to make headlines on how gruesome it is, you know? Because... It was brutal. We I mean, we got to see somebody's arm broken with a hammer while they were hold, held down. And we got to see somebody hung by their neck, you know? I just... It was fucked. It, it was, like, crazy. Crazy. Not, not for the faint of heart. Y- yeah, you definitely... <laughs> yeah, you definitely want to... You definitely want to put the kids to bed before you watch that one. Um, and but... just a side note, Ellie is tough. She was hung for like a good two, not two minutes, maybe about close to a minute, and she still didn't die. Yeah. Um, the girl was like, "Oh, I ain't going yet." Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. We. I don't know. I'm looking. I'm definitely looking forward to The Last of Us because I mean, how could you not be? Like, I, I don't see how you could be a PS4 gamer and not get that game. You know what I mean? Um, no, no, indeed. Uh, Last of Us 1 was amazing. Last of Us 2 is looking perfect, so can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that seems we, to be... It. Yeah, unfortunately we don't have much more to say about The Last of Us because uh, we just don't know too much yet. Naughty Dog love to keep like their lips sealed on this one, so we, we really can't say too much. Uh, but yeah, that is, that's basically Paris Games Week. So, yeah. Um, you know, we we hope that you guys enjoyed this little post com. We hope you guys enjoyed our, you know, uh, brief conversation on this, and uh, we'll try to on the next one we'll try to do another live reaction or a longer video or a th- more thorough analysis on specific things. Um, but due to circumstances, we had to kind of do this one a little bit quickly. But we just wanted to get this out there. You know, wanted to to let everybody everybody know how we feel. Uh, what games we're looking forward to and whatnot. Definitely. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in, following yeah. us. Mm-hmm. 
Um, feel free to leave a comment. You can hate us for our rants on Call of Duty. And other things. Um, We've ranted on some other stuff. And other things. Yeah. Let us know what you think of Paris Games Week. And, uh, yeah, what, what, whatever was whatever you found most exciting, let us know in the comments. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Indeed. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, See you later. Bye-bye.